it tells so much about the gap between NBA and EuroLeague basketball that back-to-back finalist MVP, probably top three EuroLeague player uh, currently, being at his peak is only 27, uh, I think, or 28. Uh, and he's he kind of wants to go to the NBA. He said that he was he felt ready to go there. He doesn't want huge maximum contract in the NBA. He was okay to have, let's say, a few million dollars per year. But we couldn't find an any NBA team who was ready to give him to give him some let's say solid role, six, seven, eight million uh, dollars uh, per year, and nobody take, took risks. You know? Wasn't it a contract situation, like the rights of that? That's the true. And OKC didn't want just to, to, to trade, trade him, him for some yeah. uh, for peanuts. Let's say it also uh, was part of that why message stayed. But at the same time, there was not uh, an aggressive uh, buyer for message from other NBA teams. Okay. And it kind of makes me sad, you know, that we're talking about a huge, huge EuroLeague player and probably the same happened with Bodiroga or Diamantidis. And the gap is so huge between the two leagues that it's just NBA teams don't want to take any risks, even if we're talking about the best EuroLeague NBA player at the moment. NBA teams had so much success with European players recently. It's it's strange that nobody wants Vasa Mitic or at least doesn't want to give him a mm. guaranteed role. I mean, you cannot treat Vasa Mitic as an up and coming young European who needs to work his way up to the NBA level. Either you sign him to play or you don't sign him. And it's a smart decision from his mm-hmm. part not to just go there to test himself. As he said, he doesn't have anything to prove. Remember, Players like Nando De Colo going there, even Spanulis. Yeah, Spanulis was 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 there in Houston Rockets and it just didn't feel right. Like when you see Vas- Vasilis Spanulis playing without the ball in his hands and just being a, a corner free specialist, that's that's not who he is. The so. same was with Sharas because I think that the, uh, Sharas also left for the NBA in his peak after his Maccabi years. Yeah, yeah. And maybe just, Vasa doesn't yeah. want to go that path. If, if he goes to an NBA team, he needs to go to a team which will trust him, where he can play and, and be happy. So, but it's still possible. The window is still open. I mean, yeah. l- as you said, 28 years, 27, 28 years old, at 30, he will still be in his peak. He didn't have any very yeah. serious injuries. It takes uh, he takes care of his body He a always lot. looks good in, in terms of, of, of his shape and performances. So, We'll just see what happens, but we should be happy to still maintain these uh, EuroLeague stars here, like Mirotic, Mitic, because uh, the tendency is that any younger player, if he starts dominating in Europe, he's going to go to the to the NBA. And like we should um, uh, cherish the moments when we remember Luka Doncic playing his last Final Four and winning it because we're never going to see it again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the reality. At 18 and 38, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. So the and biggest... He's not, still not yet dominating uh, in the NBA yeah. at that age. <laughs> okay. 